Hey guys, and welcome to another Will It Run style video. This one on a Cat 977 that's been sitting for 37 years. Or at least that's what I'm told, but by the looks of it, I'd say that's fairly accurate. I have very little confidence that it's even gonna run, especially since I noticed there's no bucket over top the stack. Hopefully the motor's not locked up. It was used for clearing and managing the land on this very property, and crazy part is the owner actually went to prison for two years for filling in wetlands. That's a, a story I'm told. I guess we'll start with a walk around tour and then kind of dive in uh, only other thing I know is that somebody drained the diesel on it uh, because they were planning on scrapping this well, I can't wait to clean this all off but we'll just do a quick tour caterpillar baby Got some stuff sitting on it oh, let's see okay nope that's not locked up neither is that Looking good. There's no key. Looks like left to preheat and right to start. That is seized up. Unless maybe you have to push this little button in. I'm not sure. We're nowhere near that though. Uh, it doesn't have any batteries either. Uh, let's look at this. So, so this had a bucket on it at some point. They dry rotted and then somebody threw another one and that probably blew off. But I hope that doesn't mean that water was going into the combustion chambers because that will be a serious bummer. The controls here work. Very, very cool to see. This must be an air filter, I assume. Oh, the bottom's all rotted out. Uh, so it's got a Heister D6C winch on the back. Super heavy duty looking unit. Doesn't have a winch cable. Has a vine that's growing up through it. But this is the diesel tank. Then we pumped it out right, right here. We will have to make sure that's sealed up before we go throwing anything in it. Let's go ahead and do a smell test on this fuel. There we go. Oh, it's got a dipstick on it. Unless this is a hydraulic fluid. No, it's gotta be the fuel. So that's empty. Oh yeah, that's diesel. It smells like old heating oil. Uh, as you guys are watching this, what's your confidence level if this motor's gonna work or not? I'm having a bad feeling, again, as, as I was saying, it might be locked up. But uh, you know, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking or what minute you're at. Ooh, this is pressurized. This must be the hydraulic fluid, I'm assuming. Yep, that's hydraulic oil. These controls are loose. Oh, this is looking great. The steel tracks are actually pretty decent shape. Uh, sprockets are getting a little sharp. Seems like every other sprocket is sharp. Maybe that's normal, I'm not sure. I remember replacing one of those when I was a kid. I did do some heavy equipment repairs as an apprentice when I was uh, young. All right, well this, I don't even know how the systems work in there, but I imagine all that's gonna be a problem. You know, starting it's one thing, moving it is uh, another. And with these old hydraulic hoses, I'm sure that's pretty dangerous. Here's a look at the motor. Inline six, probably. Uh, turbocharged. So that stack goes down and then yeah, water, wood, there's no drain or anything on it where the water would kind of drain out. When they have them set up like this, I always thought it'd be a great idea to have a, a T there that maybe just has a little weep hole so in case the flapper is bad or there's no bucket on there, water doesn't go inside the turbo. And this is wrapping up the full 360 walk around. Well, let's clean some stuff off now and go from there. Side note, hoping to score this boat too maybe. It's got a Force 125 on it, which I believe is pretty much the same as the, the Chrysler. So I might be able to use that for parts since mine has some issues. Uh, but you know, this, this would be a fun, a fun, I don't know, it would be fun. yellow paint under there.
missing a cover here? Probably. I don't know. I don't know anything about these, so you'll have to forgive me. I just threw this on the ground. Look at that. <laughs> Taking the shackles off. Oh, darn, that one grew up into the winch. And then comes back out up here. Yeah, that, that one's staying in there. You have to get the winch working to get that out. Now that's looking a little better. Shed a little light and everything comes back to life. Fuel, oil pressure, water temp, amps, converter temp, converter oil pressure. No moisture in these gauges. Stainless steel bezels, glass. Very nice one. Uh, mouse nest back here. Oh, that one's broken. That cage is broken. Darn. Well, next step, big step, is going to be finding out if the motor's locked up on this. Easy access to the Dipper tube stick. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. We got nice black oil. For getting in here to crank the engine over, it's going to be pretty tough. And you know, we got vines and wires intertwined. Uh, there's a look at the starter. And it's a big one. I was uh, looking to see if it had a pony motor. Uh, Camerata was telling me a lot of these have that. In fact, I think his might have that too. He's got a similar unit to this. You got to get underneath if there's any chance to get to the crank bolt. If there's even a crank bolt. Can't get underneath up front or on the side. And I guess that means... Of course it smells like diesel. I'm sure it's been leaking oil and, and diesel forever. I probably should have brought some cardboard. Might have to go get some, huh? Oh, I should have brought a socket for the drain plug too to see if there's water in there. And yeah, would you look at that? I guess I should have assumed there would be no engine access underneath a crawler. It's got this massive skid plate. Luckily, it's missing a few bolts, but uh, it looks like three quarter inch around the whole thing. Some of them are broken. We'll go get some fluids and an impact gun. I can almost sneak out of here. Yeah, that's easier. See, this is how I crack my phones all the time. Got it in my side pocket and I'm about to roll over the edge. My lanky legs are having trouble getting through. Good way to get jammed up. There we go. Oh yeah, all right. I think we're gonna leave the skid plate alone because this probably weighs a couple hundred pounds and it seems like a hazard just taking that down under here with the limited clearance and we should really hand crank the engine first before putting batteries on but we're gonna we're gonna just go with the battery method i do want to make sure that there's no water on the bottom of this oil pan though so this this could be a disaster uh, but i'm gonna try to loosen this just to see and there's a guy oh yeah see water darn I was really hoping not to see that. That's unfortunate. That means this motor was getting water through the exhaust and down past the pistons and the, motor. the cylinders are probably rusted up. So, all right, well, let's uh, get a pan to drain some of that water out. Luckily, there's trash conveniently placed all over the place. I look down, there's an oil pan. Can't beat that. Get this belt back here too. What the heck is this off of? Some kind of big air compressor? Anybody know? It's like brand new. Might have to keep that for another project. I don't know what I'll use it for, but something. Not looking good. There's one full pan. Luckily it's fully separated though, so I don't have to worry about you know, dumping this water anywhere. This is clean stuff. 
it's not like the least bit oily on my fingers. There's some oil, okay. I'm drain a little bit more out. That's not bad, it means that it was all sitting on the bottom. The problem, there it is, okay. There we go, now we got oil. All right. The problem with that is it's, that means it all leaked past the cylinders like I was saying and it, that the engine's probably locked up. I think many of you will naysay this, but we're gonna try and put a battery to this. Let's see, we got the connections. I assume it's a 24 volt starter. It's gonna tell us a couple things. Is the starter motor good? And does the engine rotate without having to take off that skid plate you gotta got remember i don't have any skin in the game here this this is off to the scrap yard so you know it's not a loss if i damage it the only thing i got in the game is my time and my well-being that being said let's put a couple optimas in there i'm assuming that the uh, crawler probably takes more like four batteries but you know these are each 800 crank amps Probably end up destroying these since it's not what they're designed for. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure which battery cable is which. I got these two and then the crossover. If I chase this one, that's going down to here. Up this one. Well, this should be about positive. I'm going with this is positive. I have some new ends, but we'll try these out for now. Positive, negative, positive, negative. That should work. Let's find out. Spark test, that's good. Yep, 25 volts. I'm not sure if this is like a ground control switch up here, but I'm not getting the ground down. Hmm, this switch is stuck, unless there's a certain technique. Where do those fat gauge cables go if they don't come in here? Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, that's the main key switch. I didn't even see that before. No key, of course. Let's try popping the switch out of here. Oh, well, it's tight. This is coming off. Here goes nothing. One of these should be the preheat. Okay, that's probably that one. And one should be the starter solenoid. Probably this guy right here. Should have a heavier duty wire, but let's give it a go. Oh! All right, that's not good for my power probe for one, but uh, that sounded like the starter solenoid. Jennifer stopped by with little Gussie. Hey buddy, you wanna help out? He's a crazy puppy. Is this your winch? What's that? What is that? I know, buddy, I know that he's torturing you. He's gonna break his leg on there. He looks terrified. All right, well, appreciate you guys visiting. We got both cables on the positive terminal of the starter. Let's let's give it a little jam here and see what happens. Oh, all right, that, uh, <laughs> That just melted a hole into the positive cable, so that was a lot of juice. I mean, we're not hitting anything down there, and that's it. So it might just be a locked up starter drawing like a ton of juice. There it goes, you heard the starter. Woo, that thing got some juice. But since the solenoid's not going, the fork doesn't engage the gear. However, we know the starter spins, so that's good. Now check this out, the switch actually does work. I thought it was locked up, but you gotta push it in, and then rotate. Okay, excellent. However, we're not getting power to the switch itself. We'll just we'll just send some power to it. I'm a little worried too that if there's water in the cylinders, it could hydro lock and bend the rod, but let's... Oh, I did hear that engine rotate a little bit. We got a much better battery connection now. Let's give that one more go. Oh, okay, all right. That was not a good stop. That, that almost sounded like a hydro lock, I suppose. Oh, geez. Let's try bumping it over a little bit. What the heck? What do you got to lose, right? What are you going to do? Bend a rod in this thing? It'll be all right. Okay, well, that shows these Optima batteries are tough as nails because that is a ton of juice. 
smoking these connections a little bit but yeah we're gonna have to pull probably some injectors um i think we got we got water in there just connect this madness for now here's the injectors if there's water in there i mean the only other thing i can think is popping the valve cover off and running the valve lash down a bunch that's crazy though i'm sure that's i don't know if that even work i don't know what the inside of this engine looks like okay about a week later or so and finally got another chance to take a peek at this i'd like to find out if it's hydro locked or if it's had weak batteries with it oh, look at this just notice this massive repair on the arm let's try and drop that skid plate down and get a breaker bar on the crankshaft Good luck getting that out of there. Oh, I can't even budget. I mean, this thing's got to weigh 400 pounds. So. that heavy but it is heavy it's about maybe half inch plate steel 7 16 i'm not sure okay now i got plenty of space let's take a look at that crank bolt and there it is what's that look inch and a quarter 30 mil 32 mil maybe Just reach in and grab a big one well 30 mil well it's actually a little bit less but i don't have standard sockets let's find out what we got Okay, so that turns a little bit and then doesn't move anymore. Let's go reverse. And I know you guys are thinking, man, pull the injectors and spray lube in there. And all that. Yeah, I probably should do that, but you know, we're just we're just going for it here. So, okay. All right, we got a good amount of rotation going counterclockwise. Beautiful. Yes, this is great. Oh, I don't hear any rust in the cylinders either. I don't hear any noise. It sounds just phenomenal. Oh, all right, getting a little tight. Okay, we hit a tight spot again. So that's either water or a big rust ring in the cylinders, I'm guessing, or I don't know, engine damage, who knows. Oh, see now I just let it sit and then I was able to rotate a little bit more. That tells me definitely fluid in the cylinders because it probably weeped past the rings. And now we're rotating again. Let me see which way this engine rotates, actually. If it cu cuts in there, it looks like this spins counterclockwise because that would pull, unless it's a blower, because if it's spun clockwise, that would pull air from inside the engine compartment and push it across the radiator. I suppose that would actually make sense with how, how there's always dust in front of these things. Maybe one of you guys know. Oh yeah, we're getting nice rotation now. Holy smokes, it's so easy too. All right, I've gone three revolutions both ways. Whatever water was in there is definitely out now. And we uh, we got to get some batteries on here, get cranking. Don't know if I have the time today. I'm gonna go check in with the with the wifey. Big crack in the spring. Just reaching down to get my phone here. And on the back, the wife has spoke. First ride on the Sea Ray this year. Take Gus out for a little spin, evening cruise. What's up, buddy? Got your little life vest on? Yeah. Ready for some river Gonna adventures. Be a water dog. Tossed five gallons in the Sea Ray, and she is she fired right up. Now we'll see if it uh, breaks down at all or gives in it gives us any trouble. First ride after six months. All right, first mate. Can't wait. Untie.
Downstater ADV and his new toy. How's the new we boat going? Yesterday. Bayliner yeah. Discovery 195. Like GM, oh yeah. Gus is over here you know, making like, love to strangers. Gus, what are you doing? That, that's my wife right there. That's like He's sleepy. sleepy. <laughs> what are you doing with those blue eyes? Look at you. We're back next day. A little rainy out. I probably should have just stayed when the weather was nice yesterday. But uh, we'll throw the batteries in, get her cranking, and hopefully fired today. Got the same two Optimas fully charged, wired up, 24 volts of ignition. Let's see if she turns over and what it sounds like, or if we gotta maybe get more juice. Here goes nothing. Oh boy, this is gonna be awesome. I'm so excited right now. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little worried that maybe we just didn't have enough cranking amps with the only two batteries, because he said there was four batteries in this originally. And then I was texting Camerata, he has a similar machine to this. I'm like, what's your batteries look like? He's got massive ones in there. But clearly the Optima's got this situation under control. Let's get some fuel going. Let's see what the inside of this tank looks like. Love to just dump diesel in it and roll with it. Let's we'll see if it's a bunch of crud on the bottom. It's not bad in there. I think we're gonna just use the, the fuel system and go with it. On the bottom, we have a pet cock that looks like it's off and then a drain valve. Oh, all right, so that was, that actually looks like decent diesel coming out of there. No, no water. Yeah. Let's start with one gallon of diesel I happen to have kicking around. That should be enough to get things going. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. Let's fire this valve up. And I got a copper line leading up front. That comes in all the way up here on the bottom. That looks like a little fuel strainer, a water separator. The good idea would be pulling this bowl off and also removing this lower screw on the filter, check for any water, but I don't want to lose the prime in a fuel system. Let's just Let's just crank it up, man. What do you got to lose, right? This Caterpillar is really on the chopping block and it's at a time crunch at this point uh, to get it moving or it's it's getting hauled out of here. I don't know how they're gonna move it, but. This is the intake manifold. It's coming right from the turbo. The intake's running off the back. And coming right through here. There's the air box. Maybe I'll try unbolting this. That way we can cap this off if we have to. This just needs the bottom half. It's all rusted through and the, the top's still good on it though. Perfect. A few last minute checks on the controls before we crank it. Um, this seems to be neutraled out there. Same, same on this one. Um, these operate and are pushed fully forward. Ran this down, I believe this is the throttle. So we're gonna just leave that right where it is. It's in neutral. I'll throw the safety on. So gonna bump that shifter. This one's chained into place, so I don't know. Uh, that one's just seized in the place. We'll assume those are okay. And we've got the convenient shutoff block. If for some reason it starts and won't shut off, our foot pedals are locked up. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Let's bring that back. All right, so that one works now. This one works good too. Connection here. Oh, a lot of junk coming out of there. I'm gonna give it a shot of ether. Only because we don't have that much juice left, right? Some blaster starting fluids got lubricant built in. Not that you need it on an old diesel, but.
Check the cooling system, get some more diesel. Let's see if that oil got milky. Nope, looks completely fine. It's a good thing we drained that three gallons of water in the bottom or whatever it was, because that would have been all just foamed up terribly. Even though it was still ice cold. You know, before we even mess with that cooling system, I want to find out if this thing budges or moves at all, because if it doesn't, then we got bigger issues. We might have to soak these tracks, some diesel or lubricant, PB blast, the whole thing. Let's, let's try and move it. I've messed with these controls a good amount, can't get it to do anything. I did want to check, uh, I was looking up, these are fluid reservoirs, and it has a dipstick here. Let's see what that looks like. Some water on the stick. That's got good clean, just about an inch below the, the full mark. The one on the back, that one not come out. I'm looking for. And that's also got fluid. It smells like gear oil. I mean, there could be other impurities in there too, but I did just notice this pin's on its way out. It's still in the other side a little bit, but you gotta be careful. Looks like it's just missing the lock on it. that just keeps going without doing research. I did call Camerata because he's got a similar machine to this, but uh, he, he said pretty much, yeah, if it's got that H pattern on there, it should be just putting in gear and go as long as it's got oil. And this is the range selector. So I tried low, neutral, and high. Yeah, it's going in the gear, I can feel it. I'm gonna go home and get some hydraulic oil for this because while this was running we had no oil on the stick and it says right on there check with engine running uh, you know it's been sitting a long time so that fluid level being low could have caused the pump to lose prime let's let's I assume this is the fill over here you know what all I got on hand is motor oil so we're gonna put that in the trans as that's what it smells like in there and uh, it's got to be changed in the future Either way, this is a keeper. A little motor oil never hurt anything. Plus, it's like, what would Mad Max do, right? There it goes. Use eng type oil. Well, that's perfect, because that's all we got anyway. Sometimes things just work out, right? And you gotta figure, it definitely has leaks under there. It's been leaking for you know, 20, 30 years. I could see it leaking all out, at least a gallon or so, but I feel like if it was a gallon low, it would still work, so I don't know, let's give that a go. Uh, still low, we gotta go get some more oil. I meant to show this yesterday, so I'd like to display it in videos any chance I get, but you see I'm parked on like the ever slightest hill right now, and the other day when we were winching, my battery actually got a little bit low from that, because I had my key on charging the battery like, I do right now too, charging my GoPro batteries. Uh, so I just always like to show the advantages of manual. We will throw this in first gear and I'm gonna hold the clutch down, let off the parking brake, let her roll, put the ignition on. Ah, uh, we're not rolling. I gotta get a little push first because I can tell it's definitely a hill. 
Oh, we might lose it. Put it in first, get the key on, snap off the clutch, and there it is. That tiny little hill was enough to get the motor running. It's like a little baby hill there. Let's go get some more oil and diesel. We got plenty of oil over here. And some more diesel. Got a couple gallons here. Now I'm sure this thing takes like 30 weight or 50 weight, but I'm just putting in what I got, you know. Here's what it is. but on the stick. And now we're up to the full mark. That was like four gallons I just put in. Gave this girl a break for a while and uh, I'm thinking a few things. The oil was so low, it took over four gallons to get it up to level. So maybe since it was low, it was all aerated now and that's why it's not working. Uh, maybe try revving it up a bunch. Hadn't really tried that since we filled it, but I'm gonna give it a few more goes. Hopefully we can get it rolling. Did you guys just see that? I revved it up and it budged some. All right, before we go, let's 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 check the water level because I've ran this quite a bit. And I don't want to you know destroy the engine. Let's see if we got cooling water. I'll just clean this off the best we can. Got the Leatherman saw blade, made in USA, and they have a lifetime warranty, which they honor. I've sent this in several times. I'm sure it's still got some water in the block, even if this rad's empty. That'd be awesome if it's just full of the top. Uh, all right, well, that's... Nothing after that gallon. I do keep some more water under the hood, though. Well, I had to go get a bucket of creek water, but got her up to level. It's about two gallons low or so, and that's not bad. We'll get some fresh coolant in her in the future. <laughs> Hydraulic hose blew out in my face. This one right here, that could have been so much worse. But yeah, you never use a machine like this with these old dry rod of the hoses. Did get a little showered in hydraulic oil. Yeah, right there, All right, so we need one of those. This is the one line that you wouldn't want to blow out. Like, so that one's actually in better shape, uh, but that's just right next to the operator. Luckily it came out this way. That could have been, yeah, I can't say it enough, that could have been really bad. Let's, uh, let's fix that leak. Get the bucket off the ground though. I don't think I'm gonna get one of those today. And... That works since I got these chained down. I was able to apply load on this ram without putting pressure through that other line and we are off the ground. Unfortunately, I can't dump what's in here. <laughs> Yeah, it's got some roots growing under it. <laughs> We're built into the tracks. I gotta get a seat for all these batteries. My butt's getting stabbed. That's a little better. My next question is, does it steer? Oh, there we go. I got it to stop in here. Now that it's moving too, it's broken all from all these roots. You don't, you can idle it and it still moves just fine. Unlike before, we just had to just had to throw this thing up.
Uh oh, we got a little cooling system leak. More like a big one. I wonder what that is. Probably a water pump. Something just blew out. That's what you, you get when you wake something up like this, but we made some good progress. I know what you're probably thinking at this point is, uh, great, you got it running, now what? Where are you gonna go from here? It needs a lot of time, energy, and money to get it functional. I also don't even have a property large enough to utilize a machine of this size. However, I know just the guy that's gonna welcome a machine of this vintage onto their property with open arms, and then hopefully we can get some more TLC put into it, get it running tip top, and save it from the scrap yard. That is the idea. So, uh, she's got a long travel down the highway, and I should probably get some of this mud off of here that I unfortunately put on the other day, because you can't have that blowing off on the highway, and cut these off, and maybe I'll just drive it back and forth, get that off of there. Uh, empty out the bucket, too bad we can't tip that, then we'll shovel it, and then uh, get her on down the road. No need to worry about pressure in the line when you have a hole in it. But otherwise, always make sure to relieve the pressure in any hydraulic hoses before you take them off, or lines for that matter. You don't even have to take off both clamps, just loosen the other side and then slide the hose up. Let's see if I can get a hose made tomorrow morning before we roll out. We got John here, a Borwegen trucking. Beautiful Western star. Definitely check him out if you ever need any equipment delivered. He's up in Greenville, New York. Hope we didn't run out of fuel. Uh, it's 
still got a little bit down there. I wonder if the got all jostled on its ride up here on the low boy. And it stirred everything up, and we might have to bleed out these these uh, fuel injectors and such. We're gonna need some more diesel, and then we'll figure out how to bleed this system. Some diesel underneath the table here. Let's go tank. With all the jostling down the highway, this little fuel outlet might have got clogged up. Let's check that too before we go any further. There's our problem. We have zero flow. Just for the record, this is why you never start something up and, and expect you're going to be on your way and go. Oh yeah, look at that. And we got some darkness coming out. Come on, bring on the fresh diesel. Took the drain screw off the bottom of this fuel filter. Let's see if there's any water. I really should have checked that before. Nothing coming out right now. And if I remove the airlock screw on the top, look at that. Okay, we got, looks like diesel coming out of there. All right, that's great. Let's, let's do a quick test. And wow, that is pretty bad looking. Put a touch on this paper. See if we got water mixed with diesel or what we got. Oh, what happened? Flint's gone. All right, so yeah, that's diesel. It's just really dirty diesel. If it had water in it, you'd hear it crackling, popping right now. That's all I wanted to see, is that there wasn't any water on the bottom. This has got a lower water separator too, a little basket style. Let's see what the inside of that looks like. All right. Mud. Holy smokes. Look how much mud is in that. And I know I already said it, but this is why you don't just start an engine up and go. I mean, luckily we have a fuel filter, so that it's probably extremely clogged up. But let's get this cleaned out of here and then we'll be back in business. Hopefully. This is true Mad Max here. Not the proper way at all. It kills me to see all this dirt in the fuel system. Should have just done it right to begin with. But in the name of Will It Run, I enjoy doing it this way so we can display what actually occurs when you're negligent. If you don't know how to manually prime the system, then you improvise. I just had fuel shooting out of there. So what we did is just pressurize the tank a little bit, push that through. I did end up putting another five gallons in here too, but just didn't have enough head to, to prime it. Okay. second check the water level still leaking so that's a good sign i'll throw a couple more gallons in though
the legend, Camerata, and his sidekick has shown up. Uh, so what do you think? You're gonna work your magic on this machine or what? Yeah, sure, now it's running and it's here. Let's uh, finish fixing this thing up and put it to work. That would be cool to see this running again. Definitely gonna be a part two on this one and we're gonna put some TLC, much needed love. Maybe a paint job, they're talking paint job, but I don't I don't think I like that idea because you, you couldn't buy this paint job if you wanted to. I mean, it's just beautiful, but we'll, We'll get this uh, pin retainer in, unseize that, get the new hydraulic hose on, fix the steering issue, maybe get a cable on there. We'll see you guys in uh, part two on the Cat 977. There's a cat dealer local too, so. Right. This is, can you find a serial number on it? Cause they want that every time. Um, the serial number is probably a metal tag. I mean, What's got, all these, hang on. Um, you got one over here too. This guy, that don't look like a serial number. Uh, sometimes it's in the back, maybe hidden by this winch. rock behind it so it doesn't roll off but we should put it next to it'd be cool to line them all up